You know, some days our lives are rush, go, 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 rush, rush, rush. Falling behind, getting behind, everything is getting delayed. We gotta hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. hurry. How many of us know that our timing is not God's time? That's right. That's right. Sometimes we want to rush the process of things. And God is just like, thanks. I'm going to take care of all of this. And sometimes He just wants us to slow down. So I'm rushing this morning, rushing, rushing, rushing. Rushing my prayer, rushing, just rushing, rushing, rushing everything. And I look up there, the battery's dead, the light's on, I'm like, oh, what thanks, God. Rush, rush, rush. So I'm rushing to go get batteries, and as I'm putting it in there, God said, slow down and look at me. Look at my people. Just look at them. Aren't they just beautiful? Just look at my, look at my people. This so beautiful. So sometimes in the midst of arm rushing all over the place, God is smiling at us and He's saying, "It's okay. I love you. You're so beautiful." Wants us to slow down and enjoy one another. Come on, Mr. Mike. Some handsome. Come on, it's a mission. It's so beautiful. Come on, Mr. Mike. It's so beautiful. Sometimes he just wants us to slow down and enjoy the moment. Enjoy the person that's sitting next to you. Trust and know that He is going to take care of all of those ins and outs and all those things that we're so frantic and worried about getting done. Because we're all doing the same thing. Amen. We're all doing it. But He put us here in each other's presence and in each other's aura just to see, hey, I see you. I see you in the midst of your chaos and be an encouragement. It's going to be all right because we, we serve a God who takes care of everything. Every intricate detail he takes care of. So have this Thank you, Lord. I had this crazy, wild, gray hair that just stuck out like this. Everything else was laying all nice and pretty, but this one was like this. And my daughter came by and she went, Oh, I thought that was late, she said. So even the smallest of detail, I'm not seeing it. I know it's there because it always comes back. A thousand more, dear. And he said, just go ahead and take care of it. Because had I seen it sticking all over the place, I would have been like, oh. So even those small, minor details, God takes care of those for us. And he just wants us to know that we can relax in him. We can have peace in him. That if it's two minutes late, it's five minutes late, it's okay. Because guess what? He's still going to be here. Hallelujah. He's still going to be here. He's still going to be in the middle of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father God, we just thank you. Thank you for this time that we have here with each other. Thank you for this time that we can come and gather together in your presence and give you praise and glory and honor this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this life, health, and strength in our bodies, oh God, that we are able to withstand and able to walk around and able to just come into your house today with our brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And hear a word from you, Father. Because that's what we come here for, amen. We come here to hear a word from God today. 
God, I need you in my circumstance. I need you to speak to me, Father God. I need you to speak to these bones, so oh God. I need you to speak today, oh God. Direct me, God. I need you. I need you. I need you. Oh Lord, I need you. I need you on my job. I need you in my marriage. I need you in my relationships, oh God. I need you. Hallelujah. In every area of my life, oh God, I need you. Whether I want to admit it or not, God, I need you. I need you to help me. Help me raise these kids, oh God. Hallelujah. Help me to stay off these drugs, oh God. Hallelujah. Help me to walk upright and righteous in your sight, oh God. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Jesus. So, Father God, we welcome you in this place today. We say, come have your way. Do what you will. Hallelujah. You guys come right now. Come Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we got little socks. <laughs> oh, Jesus. How many of you are glad that you are here today? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. God, I'm glad to be here today. I'm glad that you woke me up this morning. It may, I may have been late, but you woke me up. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I'm able to come into this house today. I'm glad I'm able to come into your presence, oh God. I'm glad, I'm glad, and I'm glad to know that when I come, Lord, you're going to meet me there. Amen? You're going to meet me there with a powerful word. Hallelujah. That's going to uplift my spirit, oh God. That's going to help me in my situations, oh God, so that I'll handle them better, oh God. Hallelujah. Not that the situations won't come, but he'll give me a better aspect of how to handle these situations when they do come. Oh, Jesus. I just thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank you all for coming here today and joining us here at City Light Church where we believe in giving God glory, honor, and praise in all that we do. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning we're going to have a guest speaker. Mr. Mike Smith is going to come and grace us with his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But before that, we want to welcome the praise and worship team. And join us as we give glory and honor and praise to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Let's give, stand up and give God some praise today.
so much that if he doesn't bless us tangibly ever again then we're going to praise him anyway because he's blessed us with so much the fact that we can blink our eyes and see every beautiful place every beautiful person in this place today is a blessing that we're breathing and we're able to talk to one another is a blessing standing here and can grasp one another and hug each other in the love of God yes. is a blessing. Yes. Yes. So God, if you don't give me another tangible thing, I'm going to praise you anyway because you've been good in my life. Hallelujah. 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 This is the time where we pray take an offering but Janine showed me something and it's so crazy because I was praying and asking God God what is the what is the verse that you would like for me to speak today about giving amen because we like to share what God's word is saying in giving so that you can know and understand that it is biblical for us to share and give amen Hallelujah. So that she came and she shared this with me. I want her to share it with you. It's fun. It's very interesting how God works, isn't it? Yes, it is. Second Chronicles 7. When Solomon finished praying, the fire flashed down from the heaven and burned up the burnt offerings and sacrifices. And the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glorious presence of the Lord filled it. When all the people of Israel saw the fire coming down and the glorious presence of the Lord filling the room, filling the temple, they fell face down on the ground and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, He is good. He, His faithfulness, love and endurance forever. So, Father God, right now, I pray this over each and every person here, Lord. Lord, you said that our praise goes to you. But it's not just a praise. It's incense that goes to your chambers, Lord. And you send out those angels on our behalf. You are so glorious, Lord. For you loved us so much that you're willing to come down and even be with us, Lord. You let us come to the chambers and pray in your in front of you, even, Lord. We thank you in your glorious name. Hallelujah. God, we just give you praise in this place. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Janet. God is a faithful God. If there's anybody that's going to be by our side throughout all of our circumstances and help us, actually help us through it, it's going to be God. It's going to be God. My husband is a good man, he's a good provider, he's a good father, he's a good husband, but I tell you what, he can't out bless and love me, my God. He's wonderful, but he can't love me the way God can. He can't teach me and lead me and guide me the way that God can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I wanted to share with you this morning 
description because you know a lot of times we preach our scriptures that tell us how we should give and how our hearts should be when we give because God loves a cheerful giver, right? There's this one that said that stood, stood out to me today, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. It says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, right? That's what I was talking about. And then it goes, 2 Corinthians 8 12 says, for the willingness is there. The gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one doesn't have. So that tells me, that speaks to my heart in this. Even though I only have 50 cents, I only have 50 cents, but God, you know my heart, and I want to do so much more, but this is all that I have. Sometimes this is all that you have. Though your heart wants to do more, what you actually have right here is all you have. And God said, even in that, don't feel like you have less than or you're lacking or it's not good enough. Because it is. It's not so much what you give and what you have to give him. Because these things, all of it belongs to him anyway. What he's looking for is what is in your heart. How much do you love me? So I only have 50 cents. But my heart says, God, I want to give you the world just like you just like you gave it to me. That's what God is looking for. He's gonna provide everything else. He just wants to know where's your heart in blessing me. Do you love me as much as I love you to give to you all that I have? Because he gave, he gave us everything when he gave us his son. So come this morning, give what you have in your heart. Already said that you was going to give. Whatever you've discussed with God, you come and you give it to me. So if you don't have anything, you just come bring it to the altar. The praise and worship team is going to continue playing this morning. And we're just going to continue to bless God. Thank you, Your house. Thank you, Your house.
Father God, for their giving, Father God, and for the heart of their giving, Father God. Meet them at their needs, Lord Jesus. We know that you're able, Father God, and we just love you in this place, oh God. Thank you, Father God, for all of your provisions. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. We changed it around a little, guys. We changed it to God is great at the end because he's more than good. He's great. Oh, man, I'm so happy to see everyone here today. Um, I'm not sure about you, but today was a rough morning. It was a rough morning today. I'm not sure if everybody that I knew, they either woke up late, they didn't want to show up to church today. There was just something going on. There's something in the spirit that just trying to keep people from the house of God. You ever realize that? Whenever you notice that there's, there's something big is going to happen inside where, where God's going to do something, he doesn't let his people know, but the enemy knows. And he goes out there and he sends his little minions to do all the little silly things that, that he wants to do to, to keep you from coming. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I, I sleep like two hours a night, right? And that's what with that, two to three hours a night. And tonight I was just like this. This morning, I mean, I, I woke up, I saw that the, the sun was out and I was still like, just five more minutes, man. There's five more minutes. Then I realized, whoa, look at the time. And I remember that we're in winter. See you, yeah. It's not summertime, Love you. so the sun is not out at five o'clock in the morning. So there was something wrong. Everybody jumped up and, and everybody was scrambling. But God is so good that the kids started to get ready before we did. Because we know that there, there's there's something that's, that's, that's happening today. We know that God is going to meet us here today. And I'm excited to see everybody here. We have a, if you guys realize there's a few guests in the house, they, uh, um, one of those guests are here to, to speak to you guys. The other ones, we just, uh, if you're new to the church and if you're just visiting for the first time, we have a, we have a saying and uh, it happened that we had a young lady come um, and as a native young lady, and we got a little, uh, a little crazy one night with worship. 
<laughs> and I saw her walking out, and I was like, dude, we scared the living daylights out of her. And I was like, hey, young lady, I'm sorry. Did we scare you? Did, was it too much? Was the Holy Ghost fire on too crazy tonight? She's like, oh, no, this is my kind of crazy. Okay. She probably, you and your sister probably. She said, this is, this is my kind of crazy. And she said, she told me, man, I, I feel like I found my tribe. And give me a booze bumps just thinking about it. And I, and I got there and I now realized that's who we are. A tribe isn't just a group of people showing up to one place. It's a group of people living together. It's a group of people raising the children together. It's a group of people playing to, uh, and praying for each other and fighting together. That's the most important thing. That, you know when you have your tribe, you know you're going to fight to, to, to get there and to make sure that everyone there is fine. So if you're a first-time visitor and you're going through, we want to welcome you to your tribe. This is a place where we'll love with you, we'll fight with you, We'll fight for you. You got a Boston Red Sox hat, we'll fight with you for real. You know? If you're a Yankee fan, if you're a Yankee fan we're going to love you to death. I'll tell you that right now. All right? Nebraska fan. Or a Red Sox t-shirt. Don't do that again. Amen. But uh, I'm excited for today. Um, I know that it's going to be a beautiful thing. Um, but like I said, I knew that there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, I have a I have a, a person that's going to come and speak today. It's not it's not going to be me. I know you guys are happy to hear that, but I don't let anybody know about it. I didn't say a thing about it to anybody, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, my friend's name is, is Mike Smith. He's a uh, he's one of the, the I'm not sure. I want to say teachers. I'm not going to say pastor, but he's one of the, the he's the head teacher and co-founder over there at the Deliverance Center in in Phoenix, and. Believe it or not, we have a well-known, renowned speaker here, and along with along with his friends, and you guys all know my small friend Rick over here. <laughs> yeah, small, small in his family. I'll tell you, we were. I was just talking about when we uh, we used to go to Encounter together, and uh, so was the uh, <laughs> guys back here. He's like, man, I know that guy from somewhere. It's like, well, you can't miss him or his kids. You know, it was like the Partridge family, except it was like Partridge coming in. They were all huge. It was crazy. It was like the Giants walking in. But I'm, I'm happy to see them here and happy to see his, his lovely wife here with him. I'm excited for all of this. But the reason um, I didn't say anything is because he's gonna. He's a he's he's a person that specializes in the teaching of deliverance. And if you all know, deliverance is the children's. Yeah. And how funny is that that Jesus comes up the bread of life? But it's a scary thing inside of the church. And I didn't say anything because I remember him, I'm not sure if I'm wording this correctly, but you said that sometimes, you, Mike, you said that sometimes you have to be like a sniper inside of the church. That's something that you said, right? So, and, and I was, and when I heard that, it, it, it pricked my heart. It, it, it hurt me. It hurt my feelings because there is no reason why a person should have to learn deliverance to go inside of their church and to be a sniper when it's something that should be done from the pulpit. Right. It is something that everybody should believe in because it's part of the gospel. It's part of, it's part of the ministry that, that God gave us to, to hear on earth. And when I heard that, it hurt my feelings. I was like, oh. I said, Lord, please don't send snipers inside of my church. Because... I want to be able to, to make sure that we're all on higher ground and then that we're all seeing everything. And then there's no need for anybody to have to come in to teach us the things that we should be learning. Well, besides you, Mike. <laughs> but that you should be a part of the family doing that. And if, you're, and if you're a member of a tribe, if you're a member of something that's real and tangible and something that you can grab onto, you want to make sure that everything is protected. My brother, Rick, and since back he came and he spoke on a Saturday and he gave a class and he taught that. And now we get to, to, to hear from the, one of the people that uh, I think maybe you worked with him and, and, and taught him a lot of what he knows, right? And so I don't, I don't, I don't want to know much. Don't take credit for that. So, <laughs> all right. But guys, uh, before anything else, I want to introduce you to and I want everybody to give a, a warm welcome to our, to our brother Mike. Smith. I don't know what the WS is. Is the mic on? It should be. Is the mic on? Mic on? Yeah. 
Yeah. Hey, Dave. Hold on, there. maybe it's on your box. Yeah. Check now. Mic check. Check yeah. mic. Okay, let's hey. do this here just in check case. Mic. Okay. <laughs> no, check mic. Uh, uh, thank you. Mic. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that on. Uh, I'm back in Chandler. We used to come over here all the time when uh, Josh Fierstein was over here. Remember him? <laughs> and we did altar work for him. He was a great preacher. All right. Uh, I'm Brother Mike. Hey, preach. From the Deliverance Center, my email address is mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Please remember uh, Brother Rick, uh, he has a uh, deliverance and healing service on Zoom every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. You can get the, uh, e the code and the password from him or you can send me an email. I'll send it to you. And you just jump on the Zoom and get healed. That's how it works. Keeping it simple. It's a tremendous service. Highly anointed. You won't regret it. And so if you got shut-ins or something like that, perfect opportunity to get healed. You just click join a meeting, put in the ID, put in the password. Miracle City. We have two live services every week at the Deliverance Center. We're not a church, we're a healing center, so we have services on Thursday and Friday night so we don't conflict with the Sunday services and the Wednesday night service of the churches. So we're, not, we're not trying to build a church, we're just trying to be an adjunct to churches. So if you know a pastor who needs somebody that's being oppressed by spirits or they're mentally ill or something, if you send them over to us, we're not going to try and steal your people and keep them there. We're just going to try and minister to them. We're not trying to take anybody from the church. We're just trying to help them. Then they go back and bless somebody at their church. I am actually not a pastor. I'm a counselor by trade. And uh, I'm not, I don't have any papers or anything like that showing that I'm a minister. Yeah, I'm a counselor, that's it. I was a secular counselor for 25 years and then a series of miraculous events occurred. And uh, I uh, moved out of the secular counseling field in 2005 and started my own Christian counseling ministry. And, uh, Ever since then, uh, I've had uh, a shocking honor of seeing uh, thousands of people delivered from demons and hundreds of people healed, some with my own eyes. And uh, the thought that that could happen to somebody like me, <laughs> it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. I should have been bagged years ago and tossed in hell like garbage. But I heard a knock at the door when I answered it. Mercy was standing there. Somebody I didn't know had been watching me. I couldn't believe it. I got saved. It was amazing. And as a grand counselor, as you know, thank you, uh, the country's going to hell in a handbasket. The devil's made his move now. And uh, it caught me off guard even, and I'm in the demon business. I didn't know it was going to go this strong this quickly. It uh, surprised me. It's unbelievable what's happening. And uh, Chandler's in trouble, and uh, City Lights is about the only hope it has. Somebody has to step up here and start ministering in the Spirit and stop uh, doing regular church services because, as you well know, church is a failure. There's churches all over the United States, and Satan took the whole place. And the reason he took the whole place is because you and I had a great commission. And Matthew and Luke and Mark 
and the first chapter of Acts, and Jesus outlined specifically what we were supposed to do. And then he went back to heaven. It's specifically listed there. And the churches did not do it. And because they didn't do it, the devil took over the country. And this isn't rocket science, it's that simple. He said, I want this done, and they didn't do it. Ma Matthew, Jesus said, I want you to teach everyone everything I commanded you. That's what he said. What did he command them to do? Well, he'd send them out on healing and missionary journeys, and they healed and raised the dead and prayed for the sick. And in uh, Mark, it says, These signs shall follow those who believe. And not prophets, apostles. No, it said those who believe. That would be... Come on. <coughs> that would be you. You said they shall do what? Yeah, and what's the next one? Lay hands on the sick. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Come on. If somebody tries to poison them, it won't hurt them. Come on. Isn't that what it says? I'm not making this stuff up. In Luke. His last words were Amen. that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in my name to all nations. They didn't do it. The church is infiltrated with adulterers, prosperity kooks, crackpot teachers, demon-possessed pastors, all infiltrated the church. One scandal after the other. Hey, the devil took advantage of it. He took over. He's running the show now. But City Lights is an uh, aberration. And God is calling this place to be different than the other places. Come on. That's how it is. Come on. Uh, your pastor's got a lot of guts. I was here once before. And uh, when I here somewhere. I'm usually there, never there again. Wow. It's a miracle I'm standing here a second time. <laughs> Can't believe it. But anyway, God gave us the Great Commission, but Father had given Jesus the Great Commission. I want to share it with you. It's quite fascinating. It's in Isaiah 61. Everybody has this portion of text memorized, probably. It said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because Yahweh, or Jehovah, has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, to open the prison to those who are bound, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, back in the 90s when I first read this, I was quite shocked. Because he stopped, he stopped in this text and didn't finish it. I thought that was odd. Whenever you go into the ministry, it happened to me in 2005, I shut my doors on my counseling center, and the first day of my ministry, at that time I was attending the Dream Center in Scottsdale. They're not there anymore, but it was a mega church. And the first day of, of my ministry was booming. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I, had, I saw four people. Three of the four of them got delivered. I went home that night. I was so happy. Uh, I thought I was, you know, the luckiest person in the world. And then I read this account in Luke chapter 4 where Jesus started his ministry. And uh, he had quite a different experience than I had. <clears throat> he walks into the synagogue. He is handed the scroll. And he scrolls it, the Isaiah scroll. And he goes down to this section right here. What I just read to you, Isaiah 61. It says, Luke chapter 4, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The Greek word for gospel there is euangelion. It means glorious good news. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, 
to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he said, hands a scroll back, it says, to the minister, and he says to them, this day, today, this scripture I just read is fulfilled in your ears. That's what he said. That was the first day of his ministry. He was around 30 years old or thereabouts. Right? He's standing there expecting a Holy Ghost revival like I did in 2005. Boy, this is fantastic. I, I'm so glad I left my counseling practice. And the place erupts on him. First day in the ministry. The place goes crazy. They hate his guts. They start criticizing him. They start yelling at him. They start booing him like Boston fans do Yankee baseball players. <laughs> they started cursing him and yelling at him, and then they tried to murder him. This was the first day of his ministry. Now, according to Tony Robbins, that's not how you want to start a new venture in your life. You want to do it like I had. The first day out, you want to be encouraged and kind of uplifted a little. And I was scared because I was leaving behind 25 years. And I started this new deal. Anytime you start a new deal, you know, there's a little bit of anxiety there. You know, did I make the right choice? Did I really hear God? Am I doing the right thing? Is this real? And you'd like to have a little pat on the fanny, wouldn't you? I don't, I don't mean that in a sensual sense, but in an encouraging sense, I'd like to have a, and I got it. Because I needed it. And I looked at this section of text, and here's the Son of God is blown away. On the first day of his ministry, he never even got out his first sermon. Never healed a soul. Nobody got saved. Nothing happened. It couldn't have been any worse. They take him out to the edge of the hill to throw him down so he'll be broken up, be bruised and bleeding to death and leave him there. They would throw him over the ledge and then they would be disabled and cut and bruised and bleed to death on their own. They would just leave them down there to die on their own. And the Holy Ghost comes down and he walks right through the crowd. What I found amazing about that service was it didn't phase him. <laughs> you know, didn't think a thing about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've had bad services at the Deliverance Center, and I've gone home at night staring out the window <laughs> with my mouth open. Yeah, you know, it bothers me. <laughs> it bothers me. I have an altar call sometimes at the Deliverance Center. It doesn't go that well. I just drive home, kind of zombie looking. It bothers me. Didn't even phase him. Didn't phase him. I have never had a service that bad. Never. No one has ever tried to stone me in a service. The worst I get, Peter, the worst I get, I get some bad emails. I'll get a bad Facebook post. Uh, they don't invite me back. This is pastor. And you're the pastor, right? These people don't get it. They had me back a second time. That's their problem. That's the worst. I don't get stoned. I don't get thrown off a cliff. I don't get beat up. Nothing. I just get uh, rejected. See? And at my age, with my experience, rejection does not phase me. I don't even think anything of it. I'm past that. But the second part of this text that Jesus didn't say, I found fascinating. To proclaim the day of vengeance of our God, 
to comfort all that mourn, and to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. This verse really hit me because uh, I had been a counselor for over 20 years at the time I first read this. And this spirit of heaviness got to me. And I had realized that after all those years I had been in the counseling practice, I had been facing this demon and didn't know it. I had no idea there was a spirit of heaviness. I was secularly trained in college, in psychology and counseling. They don't believe in the spirit world. Uh, There's some Jungian disciples that do, but it's nothing that you and I would recognize. It's all new agey. They, did, they do a little new age stuff, but generally speaking in medicine and psychiatry, psychology, they don't believe in the spirit world. Okay? It's the human mind, it's behavioral, it's psychiatric. It's all approached from that venue. Well, I didn't realize that there was a spirit world out there. And I didn't know until 2004 when I got delivered from demons that Christians could have demons. I had always been taught in the Assembly of God uh, business where I came out of that uh, Christians couldn't have demons. And God revealed it to me later that it is true, Christians cannot be possessed by demons. That's impossible because the Holy Spirit's in the spirit, man. The demons can't get in there. But the uh, Christian can be infected with demons in their body. That's what Paul was talking about in Romans 7 and 6. He's talking about the flesh. And in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Okay, this is the greatest Christian that ever lived, the great apostle Paul. The guy was at the top. There's never been anybody like him. There never will be anybody like him until the two witnesses show up in the, in the tribulation. And he said, in my body dwelleth no good thing. Wow, that's amazing. This guy had the anointing that was off the rack. Yeah. Unbelievable level of anointing. Ridiculous. Absurd. And I realized that spirits could infect people like having a cold or the flu. You can be infected with a spirit. Come on now. Then God went on to show me about this spirit of heaviness. In the United States, the number one illness in America is depression. Far out distancing. Uh, heart disease or cancer. Wow. Not even close. Depression is by far number one. And God showed me that this spirit of heaviness is the root monster behind depression. And this spirit has other capacities. Sadness, misery, loneliness, sorrow, grief. And America is being swept by this spirit. And I realized 25 years after I retired that I had been facing this demon all my career, my entire career, and didn't know it. I didn't know that he was behind all these sick people that I had in my office. Thousands of them. This spirit is the monster sweeping our society. And this demon works with other demons, principally fear spirits, and they develop anxiety disorders in people. For 25 years in secular counseling, I faced people with anxiety disorders, nervousness, OCD, PTSD. And God revealed to me that this spirit, along with fear spirits, combine their skills together, and they develop anxiety disorders in people. People have uncontrollable, unknown anxiety. 
it manifests on its own. Suddenly, something triggers them, and they start having knots in their stomach. They have butterflies to start sweating. They get a little bit of a headache. Something happens in their body, and they don't understand it. And they call them anxiety disorders. I didn't realize it. this spirit was hiding there the whole time, and I never saw him. Anxiety disorders are sweeping the country. People use because of anxiety disorders. You know why they use? Of course you do. You want something to make you feel better for a period of time. So people use. Correct? It's all to ward off the spirit of heaviness. Spirit of fear. It's all over the country. It's all over the churches. It's everywhere. Nobody knows they're there. Insomnia sweeping the United States. People can't sleep anymore. Why? Then I realized in this verse that Jesus didn't quote that day. God gave me a revelation. He said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And I thought the second part of it had been avoided because it was something in the future. The restoration of Israel at the end of the tribulation, the second coming of the Lion of Judah. There he is. I thought that was it. Oh, blew it. He meant that day. That day he was standing there. I misinterpreted the scripture. I've done it before. Then I looked at the rest of the scripture and saw that every one of these things abounded in his earthly ministry. Here was the rest of it. To proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. There were several chapters, right? Uh, Matthew 21, uh, no, Luke 21, Matthew 24, uh, several other sections of text where Jesus talked about damnation, hell, eternal life, judgment day, to comfort all that mourn. Oh my goodness. Blind Bartimaeus, the two blind men, uh, the woman with the issue of blood, the boy on the cot. Uh, somebody help me. Uh, Brother Jarius' daughter. Who else? Who am I missing? Lazarus. Lazarus. Who else? Help me. Come on. Right? P Peter's mother-in-law. And I saw all through his ministry, this spirit of heaviness, got his face kicked in. I saw joy. Constantly, wherever he ministered to people who were mourning. What he meant was, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. That day. The rest of it was fulfilled. Partially in his ministry and totally at the second coming. It says here, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I have seen with my own eyes thousands of times... <clears throat> People sitting in my office, sitting in the services, giggling and praising God after they were delivered from demons. I've seen them sit there and cry tears of joy and giggle and laugh. We just happened last week. Giggling and laughing in my office. Okay. And I spent 25 years as a secular counselor. Nobody ever giggled and laughed in my office. <laughs> When you get this spirit of heaviness out of your body, there is a lightness, a laughter, a joy, a peace you've never seen before. And this monster is at the root of ruining our society. Mental illnesses are running amok in this country. They're much worse than when I was a secular counselor years ago. They're sweeping the country. Why? What's well, obvious? 
dysfunctional families, broken families, unemployment, layoffs, insane politicians, wokeism, drugs, alcohol. Demons are everywhere. If you look in your TV guide, you're going to look at every, every third show in the, in the cable thing has something to do with spirits, demons, devils, uh, paranormal. The devil is sweeping the country now. And now he started in the church. Now there's a deliverance revival sweeping the country. And everybody's running around on YouTube casting demons out of people. They're all acting crazy and flopping around. And they all get a great show. But then they all get reinfected after the TV service. Why? Because all deliverance must be based on repentance. Okay? So when you analyze a deliverance ministry, how do you do that? Do you pray? Do you think about it? Do you meditate? No. You look at the spiritual fruit. What are they teaching? What are they teaching? Okay? So if I get up here and teach you about demon gods in the fourth heaven and Jezebel and Ahab and go on and on about all these demons and put names on everything, I have come to you a spiritual loser. I am going to get you infected with demons. I'm going to hurt you. What's wrong with me, Brother Mike? Oh, you've got an Ahab spirit. You're a Jezebel woman. <laughs> Stupid. That does not work. Okay. You've got unforgiveness. You've got ought. You take offenses. You're sinning. Then the Holy Ghost moves. Then the demons come out. Then the person is restored. Now you must renew your mind. Now you must change your life. Now you must repent of your sin. Yes. You're not sitting around <laughs> warring in the heavenlies. That's your job. Bad boy. I'm going to bind the strong man over Chandler. Boom. You're going to get your face kicked in. You leave the guy running Chandler alone and you help these people Amen. here. Wow. Peter, you do not go up here because you know where you're going to end up? <coughs> Ew, gosh. Anybody got a hose? You're going to end up destroyed. And, and if you don't repent of your sin and change your life, you're going to end up destroyed. Hello? Amen. Now you see why I don't get invited back anywhere. <laughs> this spirit of heaviness is killing people, and here's how he works. Very familiar with him. It's almost like we're old friends. He attacks you in childhood. You know how he does it? He gives you dysfunctional family members, rotten parents. He gives you a dad that's uh, unaffectionate, distant, not there. He gives you a mother, a mother that nags you. He gives you, hello, yeah, he, he tortures you, hasn't he? He tortures you. And the child grows up with fear, fears you can't believe. Right, ma'am? <clears throat> and anger and rebellion hits people. It all starts as a child. Why does it start as a child? Well, it's easy to see. Uh, children are defenseless. And God told the parents to take care of the children. And they don't do it. Every dysfunctional family in America 
has ruined children. The kids grow up, almost in every case, worse than the parents. <coughs> the demons take advantage of it. They attack the child through the parents. You know what the child does? Of course you do. He carries those wounds on their soul for the rest of their lives. Where do many of these wounded souls end up? In ministry. Come on. That's true. I have had a parade of ministers come for deliverance. They're, they're the same as parishioners. They're no different. They're no different. They had the same rotten childhood you had. They had the same demon-infected parents that you had. Right? But they got saved, and they love the Lord, and they want to serve God. And so they do. They end up somehow in the ministry. And because America doesn't teach deliverance, and the church has rejected it decades ago, all these ministers are running around infected. They're hurt. They're wounded. They have nice anointings. They're missionaries. They're pastors. They're preachers. They're on TV. And, and then they fall. Why? The spirit of heaviness. The wounds that you get on your soul from childhood do not go away when you get born again. Your spirit man is born again and perfect. Your soul is still wounded. The soul is the seat of your emotions. And that's why you get mad. That's why you lose your temper. That's why some trigger hits you and you start to act on Christ like. That's when you start to get depressed. If it's repetitive, then the person starts to think about getting out of the ministry or backsliding because they're embarrassed. They're embarrassed. They know they shouldn't be feeling that. They know they shouldn't be doing that. They know they shouldn't be saying that. And they feel like quitting. They feel like giving up. The spirit of heaviness is the demon behind suicides. Because he, he creates hopelessness. And when a person faces hopelessness, their lives become expendable. And suicide becomes logical. If I were gone, these people wouldn't have these problems. If I was gone, I wouldn't have this pain. If this, if that, if that. That's how he works. Once he's removed, the person is sitting there giggling, laughing, joyful. It's ridiculous. What's it like? Well, it's like this. He gave them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. <laughs> the person has a renovation of their soul. Okay? Your spirit man is just perfect. All the problems are coming out of the soul. Your spirit man is where your anointing is and your giftings and your love for God. Right? And you can tell someone who has a strong spirit man. For example, this preacher wife here. When she was up there, you could tell she has a strong spirit man. Right? 
any emotional issues she has is coming out of her soul, not the spirit. Okay? So if you learn to bifurcate people, it's easier to minister to them. Okay? I saw you here last time. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You're getting closer, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. There's still a little grind in there left, isn't there? I saw it earlier. <clears throat> your spirit man is perfect. Your soul man is wounded. Some ministers call it inner healing. That's what they're talking about. They don't say it, word it like that, but that's what they mean. If you have a church where you got a bunch of people with soul wounds, the pastors eventually burn out. They can't take it anymore. <laughs> because they become like me. The congregation turns them into counselors. And they're constantly going over the same crap all the time. Over and over again. The pastor starts to go, hey, I got to get out of here. 5,000 pastors a year quit in the United States. 5,000 a year. Why? They don't understand deliverance. You know? And this church has got a shot at the title. Your ministers here have an understanding of it and you got a shot at pulling this off. You're supposed to be healing people. Okay? We get that little grind out of there and that thing flows. See what happens is your spirit man can be blocked by soul wounds. So your anointing doesn't free flow. See that? If that makes any sense. Negative emotions kind of damper down your anointing. Negative emotions will hinder your praise. That's why I said here to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Ugh. You looked in the mirror one day and you said, oh my goodness, I, I look like my dad. Oh. Well, it's not your dad, it's your dad. Come on. See, what you don't understand is, you don't have a mom or dad anymore. When you became a born again Christian, you transitioned out of that family into your heavenly father's family. Yes. That's why it's called born again. The Greek phrase is ganeo anathen. It means to be generated or renewed from above. When I received Christ, I was born again. I transitioned out of the Smith family filled with losers and uh, I don't want to go into it. You, you don't need me to, do you? I am out of the Smith family. I, I'm not a Smith anymore. And that's why Jesus told us in Revelation, you know, that we get a new name when we get to glory. I get a new name. I'm not going to be a smith anymore. Even though, as you know, a smith is the most popular name in the world. <laughs> and everyone loves it. I don't love it. I don't want to be in my family tree anymore. I don't want to be connected to a bunch of demon-infected spiritual losers. I transitioned out of my family tree into my heavenly family. And God is my heavenly father. Now, I don't have a dad. 
I don't have a mom. Uh, if your parents are still living here to love them, respect them, and honor them, yes. But they're not your parents anymore. Great. Come on. You have a new parent. Yes. 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 And everything you grew up with, which is rotten, is no longer connected to you because you've been adopted, Ephesians chapter 1, into the family of God. And you don't know it. You think you're still a Jones. You think you're still a Williams. And you're not. You don't belong in that family. And if you don't believe me, go to a family reunion. It's uncomfortable being around a bunch of sinner relatives. <laughs> They're a big drag. You know why? Because that's not your family anymore. You don't understand. That's not your family. All those generational curses, all of those generational sin that came down, And if you only receive that simple truth, you can get them soul wounds out of there and those negative emotions and all that fear, all that self hatred gone. You're not a Venezuela anymore. Preach. No, you're not. No, you moved on. Nicodemus couldn't understand it. Well, religious, religious people don't understand anything I'm saying. Okay? I'm not a minister. I'm just a regular person, and I'm having a chat with you. Right? Okay. As soon as you abuse a child, it stays with them the rest of their lives. <clears throat> in their soul. And when they become born again in their spirit, that does not automatically clear up their soul. Right. And that's why ministers are to be using inner healing and deliverance. Right? And no matter hard, how hard a life you've had, right, sir? You've had a hard one. No matter how hard, Jesus. Amen. You can be healed. Thank you. you can be healed, even if you're like that guy. It's been a nightmare. Bless. The Holy Ghost specializes in nightmares. I think that's when he gets real interested when something's really bad. I think that's when he makes his move. But the thing he likes the most about a person is brokenness. And people that are raised with parents that are not affectionate and distant and kind of not emotionally there. That's very hard. It's hard to open up. Because the stoicism of the family traps the soul. I've done a lot of marriage counseling over the years, as you can imagine. And numerous complaints about wives, about their husbands not being emotionally there, or loving, affectionate. Don't raise your hands. Why? Most of the time they will have grown up in a family that was similar to that. People that said I love you but didn't actually show it. No. And kids need that. Kid needs love. Lovey. They need that. And when they don't get it, their soul is damaged and they grow up with a series of broken relationships and the spirit of heaviness. Nothing ever seems to work out. Some of you are staring at me like I'm a Martian, but 
<laughs> there's more to this system than just being emotional. There's a trigger behind it. And so God showed me to find the little triggers. And it's usually related to childhood or young adulthood or the first marriage or something of that nature. And if you don't get that thing out of there, your destiny will be lost. What you really want in life will be stolen from you. When you grow up with parents who nag you all the time, you grow up feeling uh, unloved. Hey, Amen. When you're criticized by your parents, that critical sense sinks into your soul and you start to become a self criticizer and a self nitpicker. I don't look good enough. I don't tall enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have education enough. Oh, there's there's, it's an endless array of things that are wrong with you. And the spirit of heaviness will point all of them out all the time. Now, who wants to be healed? No. <laughs> Nobody ever invites me back, but the ones that do, uh, it's worth it. Did you see all the hands that went up? You know what that meant? I was saying something they related to. Yeah. And I'm trying to present it in a way that's not uncritical. Well, if you want to be a counselor, you have to be patient with people. You got to be a people person. Yeah. I'm a people person. Yeah. Uh, sweetheart, come down here, please. Yeah, you. Come down here, honey. <clears throat> Come on. Come on down here. Are you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. And stand here. Stand right here. What's your name? Judy. Judith? Oh, perfect. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Who else? Come on. Come on. Down. Yeah, you got soul wounds, so you know you do. Now remember you gotta have some guts to come down here. And it's not something that it comes easy. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have my ministry team come down here real quick, if you would. Come down and help me. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Why are you using that cane? You got a bad back? You hurt? What'd she say? Fifth lumbar. The fifth lumbar. Fifth lumbar. What's wrong with it? Shooting disc. Oh, it was it from an injury? Or a warehouse? Yeah. Injury? A warehouse, yeah. A warehouse injury? Oh, okay. Yeah. Workers comp? No. Oh, you didn't file? Yeah. Um, did, you grow, did you grow up with parents that criticized you, nitpicked you? Huh. You know her? Oh yeah, my wife. Oh, that's your wife? Yeah. Okay. You know she she grew up that way? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you feel that heaviness right in there? Yeah, that's him. Okay. 
Close your eyes, sweetie. Close your eyes now. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Now, this minister here, Lord, is supposed to be putting her hands on people, healing them. But there's a little thing in there that hasn't come out yet. That's coming up. You follow? Yes. Okay. Now there's a spirit of infirmity in this girl here with the thing. He probably got it. There it is. The Holy Ghost moving now. That's a demon in her back. And they get in during trauma. So if you get in a car accident, workers comp, slip and fall, whatever it is, a spirit can jump. See? This is a childhood issue. Here. Childhood. See that? And uh, you love her, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Close your eyes. Lord, please forgive this husband for kidding. There it is. Boom. There it comes right there. The Holy Ghost touching right now. Please forgive. Forgive him for carrying burdens for his wife. He is to release his wife right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, who hurt you? My name is Juan. Hmm? My name is Juan. Juan, who hurt you when you were little? I'm a son of a preacher. Uh, what happened to you when you were young? What's wrong with you? Uh, drug, uh, drug use in the past and alcoholism. Yeah, now when you was little and somebody reject you. I didn't have the I didn't have the lovey touch of my dad because my dad was always reading the Bible. And, uh, Did you feel what's your dad's name? Paul. Paul. Okay. Now you're not your dad. Yes. Paul's not supposed to be here anymore. No. I, I, yeah. Let's get rid of him. Ready? Take a big breath. Take a breath. No, there it goes. Paul, go. come out, Paul. I release my dad right now in the name of Jesus. I let my dad go. I let my dad go. Paul, come on out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Hold on. Hey, how long here? He's going to fall over. Hold that guy up. Hi. Right. You know him? I'm his wife. I'm his wife. Oh, what's wrong with your husband? Has a big spirit of anger. Um, what triggers it? What, is it? what triggers it? Anything. Anything. Okay, you. You trigger it. Okay. Now, you've told yourself in the past that it's partially your fault. So, he, has, he has an anger demon right here. There. there he is, right there. See him jump? It's not you. There he comes. Here he comes. Hey, he's got anger demons. Now, listen, you got to let your husband go now and turn him over to the Lord. And no more guilt. You hear me? Open your Open your mouth and breathe. Lord Jesus, I release my husband. I turn him over to you. I am not at fault for his anger. That's a spirit blaming me. That's a spirit blaming me. And he is to come out of me right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus. All right, take a breath and blow and come out. Come on out. Blow. Keep blowing. I let my husband go. I let him go. I am not at fault. It's not my fault. That's a spirit doing it. That was not me. Lord, I cannot fix my husband. I cannot cure him. But I can turn him over to you. And I'll do it now. Thank you, Jesus. Go. Go. Come out and go. Go. In Jesus' name. Any transfer spirit that got into here from her husband, come out now. 
Let's go. Come on out. Come out. I also have a young adult son who has schizophrenia. And schizophrenia. Oh, was there witchcraft in your family? He needed to be here today. I don't know. I don't know, but there's in a long, tree? long line of addiction. My parents were both heroin addicts. Yeah. And this preacher got completely healed of addiction. I got totally. Thank you, Jesus. That gal in the green shirt. Come here, sweetheart. Yeah, you. Come here, honey. I want to talk to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, it's my daughter. I want you to pray with her and bring her up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, sweetheart. Now, what's bothering you? There's something in there. What is it? My arms. Your arms? You got arthritis? Okay, now. Did you used to hate yourself when you were younger? You are little? Did you ever hate yourself? Yeah. Not now, but when you were younger. All of them. I don't remember. Did you used to criticize yourself a lot? Go! Out right now, Get out of here! When you were young, were you hard on yourself? I don't know. I was loved by my parents a lot, so I did, you know, I, the only thing that was wrong with me that I was just molested and I was raped. That's the what age? Yeah. What age? I was young. I was you know, my molestation. I think I was young. Eight, nine. Yeah. Who did it? A uh, family member. What's her name? Um, John and George. George. Was it intercourse or fondly? You're coming out of her right now. Was it intercourse or fondly? Fondly. Okay. Now, what happened here? This this gal got molested when she was young by two relatives. And then the spirit transferred in here. And now he's ruining her joints. He's tearing her down. I crush worries. I crush all worries. Got in. I crush all worries. Are those two people still alive? All negativity. They're dead. Okay. Close your eyes. Give a good relief. Get a good breath. Heavenly Father. Out in Jesus' name. Get out of here right now. I drive you out there. Dear Lord. In Jesus' name. If those two guys were here that molested her, we would. Would forgive. We would ask you to heal them and forgive them. <laughs> we would ask you to heal both of them and forgive them. But it's, they're dead now and it's too late for them. It's too late, but it's not too late for her. This spirit that transferred into her body is tearing her joints down and giving her arthritis. And he has to come out tonight. She forgives both of them and she releases them both. Right now, in the name of Jesus, and this sexual perversion demon that got in there, you come out in Jesus' name right now. Come on out of there. Come out. Come out, you pervert. There he is right there. That's him. He's coming out now. That's him. Come out. Come out of there. Hallelujah. Breathe out of your mouth. Breathe. Arthritis, I command you. Come out. Come out. You spirit of fear, come out. Come out. Here he comes. Come out, Satan. Hey, you got a bucket? Yes. Yeah. Come out of that body right now. Arthritis, go. 
Arthritis, come out. Come out of that body. Sorry about that. Yeah, she got her arthritis. She got molested when she was a kid. The missionary? Where's that girl you were talking about? That Where's that girl at? Sitting in the middle with the body. Jesus, by the name. How you doing? How are you doing? Okay. Anything in there? Childhood? Childhood? Some tumors and hurt and some. Yeah, did you used to be hard on yourself when you were young? Are you kind of critical? Critical of yourself? Yes. Yeah. Dear Lord, what's your name, man? Latrice McKinney. Thank you, Chief. Lord, I want to I want you to forgive this woman from being hard on herself and criticizing herself when she was young. I want you to forgive her. She let in a spirit of rejection, and he's giving her tumors. He's giving her tumors. And she's going to repent of it right now. I repent of criticizing myself. You stinking spirit, come out of there right now. I command every demon that causing these tumors to come out right this second. There it goes. Come out. Come out. What are you thinking about? I want to serve God, and I don't know how, but I keep going around in circles. Now, listen, I need to send you a message. The good Lord has never had one bad thought about you. Their entire life. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetheart. Let them go. Let them go. There they come. Never had one bad thought about you your whole life. Not one thought. Thank you, Jesus. There's nothing wrong with me. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 16. The Lord Jesus said, Father likes you. The Father likes you. He doesn't just love you, He likes you. And you cannot be hard on yourself anymore. You cannot be hard on yourself anymore. You cannot be hard on yourself anymore. She, she's developing tumors because she criticized herself. Did it come out? Did that thing come out? I can't hear on that ear. Can you? Did that thing come out? Huh? It did. Are you walking different? Is there any change? Or it's the same? Yeah. There's change. Yeah, sit down there. Push your fanny back up. Push your fanny back up, back up all the way. I can't hear you. What? Scoot back all the way. There you go. Hey, uh, now when you when you uh, have hips, hips and that stuff, you just uh, take their legs up and you put your thumb below the ankle knuckle. You know that little knob there? And then you just kind of pull them out and see if they're even.
If you feel the knuckle, the ankle knuckle, yeah. and you put your thumb just underneath that little buck. Yeah. Then you check them. You check to see if they're even. And those look kind of, those look even. Okay. That's good. Now, what's wrong with your hips? What's wrong with your hips? Yeah, arthritis. Okay. Okay. Stand up. Okay. Now her legs are, are even. They, they look good. You can tell by the thumb. So it's it's uh she's got arthritis, and so that's because uh, she used to hate herself when she was younger. And that's a spirit of rejection gets in the body and he starts tearing the joints down. She used, she used to be hard on herself. And so the body deteriorates. That's how it is. Did, did you used to be hard on yourself when you were young? Were you critical of yourself? Oh yeah. You're critical. Did you used to criticize your looks and your body? You weren't happy with yourself. Never was. never was. She was never happy with herself. Did you hear that? That's our. That's uh, that's why. Arthritis. Okay. Can you repent of that? Can you repent of that? Yes. Go ahead. Now, repent of it. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me for criticizing myself, for hurting myself, seeing myself ugly. Please forgive me. Please forgive me for being seeing myself ugly. Yeah. There it is. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out. Come on. Come out of your joints. Come out. There you Come out. Come out. Come out. Is he legit? Come on. Come on. Come <laughs> All right, let's heal. Heal. There it is. Feel that? Feel that? Walk around. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Thank you, Jesus. Run down there. Run down there.
Hey, where's that gal with it? Where's that gal with it? Hey. Go get her. Hey, hey. Grab that girl. Grab that gal. Hey. Come back here. Hey, come here. Hey, come here. Hey, come here. Uh, where are you going? Going to the restroom. On the restroom? Oh, okay. All right. Now, your back's still hurting. Yeah, well, of course. What? It's not really hurting, but it's like... What is it? It's bent because of the abuse. Uh, oh, okay. Did you repent yet? Oh, yes. You did? Okay. Ready? Get that out of there, okay? <laughs> now go to the bathroom and come back here. Okay. Quickly. Okay. She went to the restroom. She went to what? She went to the restroom. She went that way. Yeah, she's gonna come back. Okay. I told her to come back. What'd she say? She's gonna come back. Is her back feeling better? Uh, yeah, but she's got anxiety disorder. Yeah. So if we don't get that out of there, her, her back's not. Her ex was uh, narcissistic, abusing, really bad. Jim. Jim was his name. Okay. He's the one. Yeah. Hey, will you check and see what this guy wants? Hey, that girl get healed over there, the one that the demons are flying out of? That girl, that lady, she get healed? What happened to that lady? She's right here. She healed? What did she show this What she say? She said it's gone. Oh, uh, it's gone? I'm sorry about that, Mike. Mike. <laughs> For some reason, the microphone is back now. Now, you guys, now you guys see why I had to go see that. It was a sniper attack, exactly. See, I think it's a unit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and this is one of the reasons why people don't invite people like Mike to the church. This is one, one of the reasons why 
everybody wants to keep deliverance out of the church because they're scared of something like this. Who got prayed for today? That lady there. Yeah. This lady here. That, hey, that, come here. Those. Come here, sweetheart. You prayed for that was something else. Like, yeah. <laughs> what happened to you? What happened? Yes. I came in and I didn't even tell you. Since day one, you know, I go to church and I praise God and I feel the Holy Spirit and all that. The devil attacks me every morning and says, I'm a person. I'm not. I came up here. I wasn't dragged up here. Well, kind of sore, but he didn't drag me. And he has to listen to me every day and hate myself. Even though he loves me unconditionally, I didn't love myself. I couldn't because of all the bad stuff in my past, things I did to myself, things I did to my family, things that were bad to me, and then I just gave it all to God. And also I prayed about my pain. I came in here and I was hurting. I am not hurting right now at all. I can't hurt. I, I cannot hurt you all right now. <laughs> Praise God because this is real. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's a fear spirit. Let him have it. Let's go. There you go. Come on. If they, if they don't want to testify, that's a fear spirit still in there. Okay. It, it's insecurity. They're afraid of looking like a fool. That's what it is. So I force them to do it, to overcome it. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm here all the time reading the Bible, praying for everyone, stuff like that. I don't have any demons inside of me. I don't. Yes. But when it comes to deliverance, it's totally different. The demons were flying out of her. <laughs> God opens the heart for you. And he opens your ears and eyes and he lets you see. Jesus. There is something wrong. Me thinking long. Pastor's always asking me, how oh, many how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm always fine, no, I'm that. I'm, I'm right. Jesus. There's always something inside of me just attacking me. Sometimes I try to just leave it in God's hand, but no, you need help. And I'm happy that I'm have my brothers and sisters here that help me out to deliver me. And love so just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, that thing that was haunting her every day came out in that bucket over there. Hallelujah. Who's next? Hallelujah, Jesus. Who's next? Testimony. Testimony before we close. Anybody? Jesus. Jesus. Hang on. I've been dealing with a lot of things in the past, but God is good. I'm afraid. I felt afraid. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff. I've been dealing with stuff from my parents to witchcraft to all this soul ties. And I can honestly say, I finally, I forgave myself. And I've forgiven the people that actually hurt me. And I can't actually tell you, I have been set free. And thank Jesus I have for this moment. I've been here, coming here since May of this year. I've been dealing with a lot of pain in my leg. I come here and I push through the pain every day. I searched today for my healing and I got it. I have no more pain anymore. That's what I'm going to be from now on. What happened to you on the floor there? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Lord. It's all about you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Wow. It's all about you, Lord. So, two part. First thing is, I'm always wondering around. 
uh, searching for a dollar confession. And that's whether I have my SSI or not. And I ask God, along with forgiving my family, free me from always trying to look ahead to the extra dollar instead of budgeting the little bit I have. So I'm free of that. And I thank God. Today is the day. Second part of the series. Um, I've been here for 15 years from Michigan, really just me and my kids. And I was always looking at my phone, my cell phone or my phone, like, God, nobody in Michigan is calling to see about me. And I'm out here suffering all these years in Arizona. Nobody can call and see about me and see if I need something. So I had to develop a life of coming up with a dollar. So that's where that came from. But today I forgive them all. And I'm going to try my best to go down to Michigan just to say hello. I love you guys. I forgive all of you. I give it to God. Amen. 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 Uh-huh. I have a testimony too, but if you're done with that, it's fine. If you're done with the testimony, but I have a testimony. Yeah. I'm not there. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. Hello, everyone. Hi, uh, Grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. And I don't even know where to really yeah. begin because uh, I had like at least, uh, well, anyways. I came to ADC um, in August, and um, and then I came back again because uh, I needed to finish my deliverance. And basically, I came encrusted. I felt like spiritually encrusted, and like they just had to like take off like layers and layers and layers of things. And like I, I felt better, and I'm just I've been here for two weeks, and I'm just getting better and better. The curses are breaking. I come from a family of. Um, occultism, uh, witchcraft, and um, sexual abuse, and like one of my cousins went to jail for being a child molester and stuff like that, so like others weren't caught, but anyway, so I was free, uh, uh, delivered from childhood abuse of various forms, spiritually, sexually, emotionally, physically, mentally, um, and just, uh, just, just continuing to heal and to be delivered <coughs> with these wonderful people, and I'm glad to find my tribe. Thank you, God. <laughs> Welcome to the tribe. <clears throat> I know we're trying to move forward, and I don't want to keep you guys any longer than what you need to be here. But as one of the pastors of this house, I want to say how it warms my heart. It touches me in a special way because we are constantly praying for our tribe and praying for the things that you guys see you don't even see in yourselves. And we're just asking them, petition God on your behalf constantly for deliverance in certain areas that we see that you don't see and that, you know, we have to speak to you about because we see you. Um, and to see you guys to just get this deliverance, you know, to want it and to put it before God's feet, hallelujah, is such a pleasure to us. Not because we want to see you scream out or vomit on the floor, but we want to see you free. Amen. Free. That's what a pastor wants for his flock. That's what they want for their tribe. For you to be totally, totally and completely free. And they go out there and free somebody else. And that's what we were told to do. And that's what we want to continue to do. Oh, beautiful. Now you came in late, right? Yeah. You you need to repent of anything today. Uh, you don't know. Oh. Okay, that's not a good answer. Now he's going to repent today of chronic negative thoughts about himself. And uh, City of Lights Church is going to pray for you and help you. Can I go ahead, dear Jesus? Please forgive me for having chronic negative thoughts. I repent of it. I'm not going to listen to the demons anymore. I'm not going to listen to thoughts in my mind running me down. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to change and I'm going to repent. As we close, uh, I'm assuming we're closing. Uh, all these good things that happened up here, these were all Holy Ghost things. This had nothing to do with me whatsoever. I couldn't, 
heal myself to save my life, as you well know. All of these are from the broken body of Christ. All of these are from the great commission of Jesus. I read it to you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted. And broken hearts lead to physical breakdowns and diseases and illnesses, particularly joint issues like arthritis, fibromyalgia. In this particular case here, it's totally different. These are brain demons taking over the mind. And God requires you to use your free will. To reject those thoughts and renew your mind. Yeah. Your Heavenly Father will not overrun your free will. So, earlier when I was calling people up, they didn't have to come up here. The pastor wouldn't force them to come up. They could have run out. And I would not have chased them. Well, well I chased that one gal, but generally speaking, I would not have chased them because your free will is sanctified by God. So each person chooses this day whom they will serve. And the Lord said, I set before you blessings and cursings, life and death. Therefore, you choose life. It's all human free will. So while you're ministering to people, if they're not listening to you and they won't repent, cut them and let them go. Don't let that bog you down. Move on to the next one. Okay? So you don't get pastoral burnout. If you're always trying to help people who won't listen and won't change and won't repent, they're what I call demonic plants. The devil tells them to come to the church and wear out the pastors. It's a, they're plants. You cut them and you kick the dust off your feet, preacher. Move on to the next person, okay? Don't get bogged down on somebody who doesn't listen. It's your free will that determines your miracles and what you get from God. Now, you weren't were forced to come down here, no one forced you here. You came down here on your own earlier. Now, I pointed some of you out to get the thing going. But then I knew the Holy Ghost would take over after that. I just tried to set something up for him to jump start. I don't, it doesn't happen all the time, but I was just, that's all I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to embarrass anybody. I was just trying to get it going. <clears throat> but if somebody's not going to listen, and you go over 50 times with them, and they're not listening, don't let them suck you down the hole. Because you'll ruin your anointing and your ministry. You can't do that. This place is special because Amen. the Holy Ghost wants to start moving here. Amen. He's already been moving. He wants to ramp it up. Yes. And that's his habit. He's addicted to it. He likes to ramp it up. He never just stops at one spot. He's always ramping it up. And what I do is I kind of go around to different places not very often and try to just give it a bump that's it and then then these good people crank it okay so uh, none of these healings had anything to do with me thanks for inviting me pastor we'll see you next time we have one more testimony. Oh, good. I want to kind of make this fast, but um, you take forever. I know. I know. <laughs> Here, stay with me. So, <laughs> I am a, I'm a son of a preacher, and my dad never really gave me a lot of attention because he had other things to take care of. And, um, I grew up very angry. I hung around the wrong crowd and. Uh, at the age of 12, I started drinking and smoking pot, and by 16, I was doing drugs. And about uh, 
last year I overdosed on fentanyl. And uh, my wife found me in the closet. And uh, she could have called the cops. And I would have been in prison right now. But she prayed for me and, mm. and brought me back to life. Thank you, Lord. I didn't get the, I didn't get the liver. I didn't get the liver. And um, my drinking came back. And uh, I stopped doing drugs. But a couple of months ago, um, my my drinking got really heavy, and I drank a bottle of whiskey. Slept for like two hours. I woke up. My alarm went off, and I'm going 90 miles an hour down the 202, still drunk. And uh, I passed two police officers going 90. I think, well, I'm, here we go. You know, here, here I'm probably gonna go to prison here. Going you know, 90 miles an hour, and they didn't chase me. I pulled out, and I started crying. I said, I can't do this anymore, God. I called pastor. He's like, go back home. I'll meet you at your house. And he called Rick, and that special man back there in the blue, who has been praying for me. And uh, it's been, it's been, um, this is, when they talk about tribe, this is where I'm supposed to be. And, and 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 the enemy tried to force us to be late today, and Melissa be like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to sing because I'm going to be late. And we still showed up. Amen. Amen. So, um, don't 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 ever give up, you know. And we're that's right. Fall. You know that's just part of life, but we have to keep we have to keep trying and and, and be delivered like today. Praise God. Now there's there's some of us that just thought this was a little bit nutty and everything else, but it's the gospel, man. This is not something that's out of the ordinary. This is what's supposed to happen. We're supposed to come and be delivered and not walk into the house of God and leave the same way that we came in. Now this is not the way it is every Sunday for the visitors. I like it's every Sunday, just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's okay. All right, but I'm telling you. But when I tell you that things are going to be be different, it's just uh, <laughs> Sean's like, man, you you're sneaky, bro. <laughs> hey, go, I told you, I didn't want, to, I didn't need a sniper coming in. I had to get New York on that one. I need a sniper coming in. That wasn't what. It, thank you, bro. You know, my thing. but and it was I, I, it broke it broke my heart to hear that people have to sneak into a church. To help get people delivery. Right. Because it, it, it's sad because this is what's supposed to be happening. And this should be the heart of the people, not only the heart of the pastor, for his people to be delivered. I know that we're a church that loves and we're, we we try to do everything that we can. And I do believe that that we're, we're moving in the right direction. And that we're going to the things that God has for us. Mike, I know you don't do offerings and things like that. And God just blesses you, but we're we're different. We're gonna try to, to to be a blessing to the people that came to bless us today. And it's not something that he does. He, he doesn't. The first thing that he says is, "I want to come by no charge and do a class for you." But I didn't want to do a class because I wanted everybody to come. And I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell any of you guys because I didn't want you to walk out the back door because you don't need deliverance. If some of you would have allowed yourself to be free, you could have been set free from all the stuff that's been holding you back. So some of the sad thing is that some of us will leave still the same way that we came in. But the beautiful thing is, the beautiful thing is that the, the people that were scared the most came forward. Mm -hmm. You guys would have never come up. I know that. One was like, really, dude? I, I should have stayed home. And look at him up here broke down and everything else and then some people came up and they refused to let go but it's okay it just wasn't your time you that's all it is but this is the beautiful thing about who God is he doesn't give up on you all right and he keeps on chasing after you and keeps on chasing after you all right um I know that God is doing something special but I, I want to bless the man of God and uh, this is not something that we usually do we're not this is not us but I want to bless the man of God and, and um, because the, they, he'll tell you that they don't charge even at the deliverance center where they do this every single night they don't charge Rick Cat is on, on the radio Wednesdays and things and Mike you're on every day on the radio um, I don't have that information but what's the website? Uh, hardcorechristianity.com 
Yeah, uh, 10, 10 a.m. 10, 10 a.m. I'm on every day. 10, 10 a.m.? At, at what time? 7.30, 5.30. 7.30 and 5.30 in the afternoon? Okay. The recordings or are you there live? Uh, the recordings. Okay. So 10, 10, the radio 10, like 10, 10 wins? 10, 10 a.m. 10, 10 wins. Oh, that's in New York then. 10, 10 wins. I was like, wait a minute. No. Yeah, 10, 10 a.m. That's, that's the radio station. 10, 10 wins. Hey, you listen to 10, 10 wins every hour at 10 o'clock. Every every 10 minutes on the hour, you've got good news. 10, 10 wins. <laughs> so 10, 10 wins at 7.30 and 7:30 in the morning and then 5 p.m. If you guys want to listen and go through 5.30 p.m., I apologize. I always cut out the 30. All right. So um, two things. One, we want to take an offering for the man of God. Like I said, he does. They all they do this all for free. They don't charge anybody anything. But the, you know, there's expenses uh, to their ministry to what he does. The same way that we bless, uh, Eric, we want to bless. We want to bless Mike as well today. So if you guys have an offering, whatever it is, um, just do me a favor. Just come up here and then just bring something. If you gave earlier, this has nothing to do with the church. This is going straight to Mike and then to, to his ministry. And then we'll get it together. If you don't have anything to give, we, we understand nobody. He didn't come here for anything. We just want to bless the brother, okay, because of what he did. Uh, and Do we have, uh, have to smile? You have to smile. All right? It's Kevin. <laughs> and Mike, <laughs> I know that some of you guys don't get invited many places again after you guys come through. All right? So, but, but, but. You can come by on a Saturday for some for some sneakers, sir. I mean, for some sneakers and donuts. And that's about it. But you're not touching the mic again. Look at all these crazy people crying and boo boy getting healed, running around the roof. Right? Oh my goodness. Okay. And so Terry's got it. If you got something, just bring here. And then who's there? What? What am I looking at? What? You want the microphone? No, you can't have the microphone. You're talking. All right. <laughs> <laughs> together. Um, the reason why I'm going through, because you got to remember, we're not having service next Sunday. All right. Christmas, we're not doing service on Christmas Day. It's because I'm expecting to have a lot of presents and I'm going to open them up Christmas morning. <laughs> but we are going to be doing Christmas Eve service in the morning at, at 11 o'clock. Um, we've got a, I'm frying a turkey. If you guys like fried turkey, I'm frying a turkey. We're smoking a ham. Uh, I think we're smoking a couple of hams. So we're going to have a service, and then we're going to have our lunch. After service, we're going to do the, the white elephant thing, I think it's called. Right? Am I saying this right? Yeah. We're doing the, the white elephant, um, and that's where we're doing a Christmas ball. I don't know how that works either, but so all I know is I'm doing what I've been told. All right. So Good man. that's all I know. That's my Christmas present is life. I'm happy to have it. All right. So that's that's the whole thing. Um, so another thing is tonight, every single night at six, every Sunday night at six thirty, we do praise and worship, and it's not your typical songs that are just saying these guys get down because this is their opportunity to worship. So when they're when they're doing praise and worship, it's not singing all the songs that you hear on the radio. This is not what's happening. This is their opportunity to do the stuff so they can worship. So there's also prayer that, that's available. They're getting down. They're doing the things. They're reaching out to God and getting what they don't get because they have to play songs to please you on a Sunday. They do songs just to please God and themselves as well and get into their worship. But we all get to soak in it. And it gets really, really good. The prayer gets really, really good. And people get healed and people get delivered as well. It's a little bit different than tonight than this morning, but it gets it's amazing. Amen. So um I know the Pastor Keisha has something she wants to say. I don't know if I messed up any announcement. But um but we just want like I said, uh, we just want to say thank you. Um I'm gonna tell you to see my brother Rick and to see his family. And to see his wife, man, it's an amazing thing. You probably don't recognize me because I had like this no no beard, you know. So I've been growing the beard and just came to me. So we've been we've been growing it. Want to pray for it? Okay, go ahead. I'm just here. 
Father God, we just want to thank you. Thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you for this time of deliverance, oh God. And just use us, Lord. Use us mightily to do what it is you've commanded for us to do, Father God. That's all we want to do. We want to do what you want us to do, Father God. And so we just want to bless this man for coming into this house today, oh God, and delivering your word and helping your people move forward in you, growing in you, Father God. So, Mike, we just want to bless you with that today. Thank you. I pray that it helps your ministry. It's not a whole lot, but we still pray that it helps your ministry. We know that God will bless the seed. Hallelujah. So it will grow and reach those who it wants, who God wants it to reach. Amen. So I know everybody, my husband has been telling some people 10.30 for, I know today you said 11, but you've been telling everybody 10.30. We are doing 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, because we want the kids to be able to come and practice a little bit beforehand. How many of you, show of hands, how many of you he has told 10.30? Tell the truth. Okay. So, <laughs> we want the kids to be able to come in and practice. They're doing a little something to bless you all. Okay? And they have been practicing. They've been doing so good. So we want to give them time to come in and practice, warm up, and get all of their little... What is Thank that? The little wiggly stuff. Got to get it all out. Because you know kids, they got to get all of that stuff out of their system so that they can be, stand here and, and hold still and do what they got to do. Otherwise, they're going to be doing laps around the church trying to deliver something for you guys. Amen? You know that's true as children. And so we just want to be able to come and use that time as fellowship. Fellowship for one another. We look forward to it. Uh-oh. Here comes a dynamic duo. Come on, get it. Bum, 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 bum. Won't give it up. Bum, bum. I know you did not say that. Time <laughs> <laughs> for deliverance. We'll get a so we just want to thank you all for coming today. God bless you. We pray that God blesses you on your way home. Blesses your work week. And until we come into this house again, you all have a blessed day. If you're if you're a visitor and you didn't come with Mike's team and you came to just to visit the church for the first time. I want you to grab a form and a visitor's form and fill it out, put your information in there. Please make sure they get a form. You guys out there get a form. Hey, Bob.